G'day, it's Clinton Brett from Diesel Help Australia. I just thought I'd take a bit of time out and um, I want to show you a bit of a demonstration on dilution of diesel oil in the diesel engine. Now, particularly uh, related to DPF vehicles, we've um, had quite a significant increase in DPF diagnostics of recent. And um, one of the misleading facts um, that we find or misleading issues um, that we do find in the DPF diesel vehicle is uh, when people are checking the oil level and they um, they let us know and they say clean it's quite over full um, I think it's been doing too many regenerations now what a DPF just briefly a DPF as you know is a diesel particulate filter it's there to um, to reduce the emissions by burning burning away and cleaning out the soot levels and reducing the soot levels um, reduce reducing um, hazardous carcinogens from the exhaust system and by doing that, it actually carries out a regeneration in the vehicle whilst it's driving. Um, and that, that is a periodical process that the computer generates at um, determining whether um, by measuring different um, parameters, whether it requires one. But a lot of vehicles generally carry out this regeneration over a certain period of time. When that regeneration takes place, Diesel, in fact, is injected during the exhaust stroke um, on pretty much every DPF vehicle. Um, other vehicles do have a secondary injection through the exhaust system, but that goes out through the exhaust. What's actually taking place in the force re, um, sorry, in the passive regen the vehicle's carrying out is that um, because it's on the exhaust stroke, the diesel bypasses the cylinder, um, the walls, and goes down and fills up the sump. Now, over time. A manufacturer knows exactly, uh, well, they determine, use an algorithm, how much diesel will be in the sump. Um, so getting back to one of the issues is that, um, is we find that there are other underlying issues in the diesel engine, that diesel can become um, increased level in the, in the engine oil itself. So we won't cover that today, but I just want to show um, you a bit of a tip and a bit of a um, quick diagnostic procedure, very basic by using a piece of kitchen towel or a piece of white paper is the best way to do it. Good to find out is it over full full of diesel and of course is it related to DPF or is there another issue underlying um, an underlying problem in the vehicle. So the best way to determine it is actually go back to the scan tool and actually look at when the last regeneration took place and if there's possible, actually look how many regenerations have taken place um, over a certain period of time. Because the one that I actually have is not a uh, DPF fitted vehicle, but knowing the age of the vehicle, we could have a bit of dilution over time. So what I want to do is I want to just get it out and I'll get a piece of, um, of, uh, piece of clean section of this paper itself and all we do here is actually just dab it on so what I've got here is um, we've got an outer ring here which is um, very light there that's a very light spot um, so the diesel being a lot thinner than actual engine oil will tend to spread out a lot quicker and absorb up the paper so it's almost like looking at a um, uh, like a pie chart and working out what percentage area. So we've got a very outer rim here now We're probably looking at approximately around about five percent of diesel fuel in the oil So as you can see here this particular test with the oil has shown quite a rapid expansion of diesel the lighter area is the diesel that's absorbed into the paper the center area is the actual engine oil itself. So this um, particular sample has quite a high rate of diesel fuel in the sump as compared to the test previously. So by looking at that pitch, you can approximately work out that there's at least more than 50% of diesel fuel in the oil. And what you would do now is then refer back to the actual um, scan tool look at how many regenerations have been done um, we've had several cases where the diesel sump is actually filling rapidly within half an hour yet the last regeneration was not done for probably a hundred kilometers so that can kind of determine okay well we haven't actually got an issue with the DPF doing too, too many regenerations we've actually got an issue somewhere else in the engine so 
be aware of that it's quite quite easily to be um to go off track and the, and the wrong diagnosis as i mentioned um a number of regenerations will take place during the um the time of the vehicle and and one of the things i like to enforce with dpf diagnosing um particularly when the vehicle comes with the dpf light remember that dpf fault doesn't mean there's a dpf problem um one of the um first go-to places that mechanics seem to be taken up straight away is going for a force regen um look early days uh when i started out doing dps in the early 2000s we thought that was a norm we thought that dpf regeneration would fix all our problems um unfortunately we we were misguided by um scan tool representation there just because it has an option to do a force regen doesn't mean it must be carried out um one of the issues with the force regen is that the vehicle's not um you know simulated in its actual driving condition when the generation's been taken place so i do my best over the for the years and um that we've been running our training course the last seven years and particularly our diesel help uh network um the guys will know when we discuss on the phone they're quite surprised when i say guys um remember moving forward um please avoid uh force regens at a wall cost okay so if you can carry out a passive regen the best way to do a passive regen is to actually find a road um you can sit on the vehicle around about 1800 to 2200 rpm doing 75 to 80 k's an hour holding constant speed for approximately 20 minutes without changing often on the accelerator do not overload it do not feel that you have to drive the ring out of it it's a constant speed that is the correct kind of regeneration you can do if in a situation particularly in city areas and you feel that you must do a force regen remember to first test the dpf for blockage if it's already blocked and you carry out a force regen you risk causing major damage to not only the dpf but the dpf um the dock the diesel oxidization catalyst the back of the turbo and in fact the engine okay so please take into account um these are a major issue carrying out a force regen um understand i'm speaking from experience and you know we're dealing with probably an average of roughly 10 to 20 dpf vehicles a week um or dpf particular problems a week and that's not just on passenger vehicle we're dealing with trucks earth moving equipment industrial engines as such and agricultural so our um we've got such a, a broad range of diagnostics um involved weekly okay so remember try to avoid it um the other important fact behind doing a force regen if you decide there's no other way around it if you're going to carry out a force regen you must replace the engine oil and the oil filter every time make sure you readapt the dpf as well at the same time okay so that is very important to remember okay so thanks for joining me today i um trust i'll see you at one of our training courses remember there will be a dpf training course throughout the year um very limited locations and limited numbers as all our courses are if you would like some personal help directly you can join diesel help at www.dieselhelp.com.au and um, we look forward to seeing you soon bye